Hey, it's Tara Green here talking about the weekend astrology. So after a pretty intense week, a big super full moon on the 11th, well, we can sort of get to settle down a bit, at least until Sunday. So today we've got on the 13th, it's pretty mild today. Uh, you know that Venus has already entered Leo since the 11th as well. So your passions, your heart, your relationships will be more fun, more upbeat, more fiery, more heartfelt. You know, rules the heart more childlike, more innocent, more stepping up to the plate, more dramatic. Okay, so today the moon's in Pisces, so we're at the close of the moon going through the last sign of the zodiac. And every time the moon enters Pisces, this is the psychic peak of the month at two and a half days, approximately, that the moon spends in Pisces. It's a time for you to pay attention to your dreaming, to really tune into your intuition. It's good for all creative work, channeling meditating, lucid dreaming, projections, all of that stuff. Really good. So listen to your intuition. So the moon is opposite Mercury and Virgo. So while Mercury is in Virgo, we're very, very accurate with our attention. We want to pay attention to the details. We're focused, micro-focused on the problems and very self-critical. So it might be harder for you to meditate with Mercury and Virgo because your mind is always going and also be aware that your intuition is heightened and your gut instincts, which Mercury also rules, might be your gut actually literally might be more upset and sensitive. So the moon sextiles Uranus and Taurus. So again, Taurus is like related to the gut instincts as well. So pay attention to your body signals. The body never lies. Okay. So remember, this is the most empathic. You can easily lose yourself in everybody else and just in the big psychic energy and in the whole auric fields. The moon in conjuncts the sun in Leo, so that means our egos and our feelings are kind of blind to each other. You might want to stay indoors, actually, which is the Pisces moon tends to make us want to, you know, kind of hide away. But that Venus in Leo wants to go out and party, so you might be feeling like you're going back and forth. Now, Pisces is a mutable sign, so you're easily changeable. And then on Sunday on the 14th, the moon in conjuncts the sun, you see that energy carries on that. It's an Eastern daylight time. The moon conjuncts Neptune and Pisces in the morning. So this is really good for dreaming. So this is probably the peak night of dreaming. Uh, the moon sextiles Mars as well. So again, when you wake up, your guts might be grumbling. You might want to eat a big breakfast. You might be really ravenous and really enjoy it though. Like Mars and Taurus wants to eat slowly and enjoy every sumptuous bite. The moon also sextiles Pluto. So that's a very Scorpionic kind of energy. That Scorpio overall signature is going to continue all day. Um, I was on Twitter and somebody was saying, don't you feel like you're going through this massive transformation? And that's definitely caused by the South Node in Scorpio right now. For everybody, it, this toxic dumping, releasing of old emotions, old karmic issues right now. Um, you can feel there's a lightness beginning to filter through. Um, moon sextiles Pluto again, 11, 11 a.m. That's in Eastern Daylight Time. The sun opposes Saturn at 1.11 p.m. This is also Eastern Daylight Time. Pay attention to those synchronous numbers. So this is like a reality check there. Sun in Leo as well. Big hearted, passionate, big hair, drama. Have fun, love your family, wear your heart in your sleeve. And then Saturn in Christ really wants to be the cool one who's very detached and, you know, they're opposites, right? You gotta remember, so as we're moving into the Aquarius age, the shadow of Aquarius is Leo where it's kind of, can be all about me, you know, that downside of Leo. Um, and Saturn in Crisis, the opposite should be all about us, uh, in a way, the collective. So, can be good. Can be good to take your family dramas to a higher, more detached level. So you might be a bit of a go-between, you know, all Aquarius, all air signs are kind of go-betweens. And then Mercury and Virgo in conjuncts Chiron and Aries. So again, this over-analysis can really give you a headache, very literally. Um, try to turn that inner critic off. Try to be more aware, self-aware of your own inner critic going off on you all the time. And go, that's just really hurting me. It's not really helping me to get anything done. Trust me, I know that one really well. The moon uh, has been void, of course, since 11, 11 a.m. That's Eastern Daylight Time. So that's just good for mundane things. Do the laundry, catch up hang out, you know, it's Sunday morning. Uh, the moon then enters Aries 4.43 p.m. That's Eastern Daylight Time. And we're archetypally at a new beginning. So a fresh start, Aries, the cardinal sign, spring. Spring into action, you little rams. 
And then speaking of REMs, Mars in Air, Mars in Taurus, the ruler of Aries, trines Pluto in Capricorn. So again, this is where that Scorpio energy comes in here. Mars and Pluto are co-rulers of Scorpio, and they're in Earth signs. And so we want to bullishly ram our way through any power struggles. That's what Pluto and Capricorn is. The overlords, um, you know, charge them like raging bulls. The overlords, I think the CDC is backing down now from all of its COVID recommendations, kind of um, embarrassingly say, oh, we don't need to do any of that. We never ne needed to do that, as if you wouldn't notice. Um, so Mars trying Pluto is good to get a lot done. Climb those mountain peaks, you know, write down, speak out loud what your big goals are and make sure you get them done. Stamp your feet like a, like a bull, you know, stay really grounded, you know. And then Aries moon trines Venus and Leo. Again, another good, so a fire and earth trine um, doesn't quite make a six-pointed star, but there are two trines in two different elemental fields there. Very fiery. Could be a new love coming into your nut, into your life, a new creative self-expression. Venus and Leo is creative self-expression. Um, new family energy. Just this sense of pride. Venus and Leo is pride, especially women's pride. Uh, standing up and defending women. Uh, warriors, you know, men as warriors. Mars and Taurus would be a kind of defending the feminine. Mars and Taurus is weak because it's in the opposite sign it rules. Um, just start new beginnings. Open up your heart. Be brave. Be bold. Fortune, what is it? Fortune features the brave and the bold. And that's kind of like Mars and Venus. So Mars and Taurus right now is not that strong kind of wants to stop and smell the roses, do stop and smell the roses, and feel your heart pumping. You know, Venus and Leo feels like very much exciting and like falling in love for the first time. That's really what it's all about. So wishing you all the best blessings. I'm at terratero.com. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. I'm on Facebook sometimes. Okay, sending many blessings of the day.